It has been two months since I've bought the TV for my sim rig, and today we're going to do some sort of debrief with advantages and disadvantages of this type of equipment for your sim rig, why you may want to choose it or look somewhere else. Let's go to the conclusions first. If I were to do decision again of buying a TV or triple screens or VR or whatever, I would still do the TV. I would probably choose a OLED or something like that, go a little bit further than my budget allowed. But regardless, the experience that I'm having with this TV, it is way above than I was expecting. What I've discovered when buying this TV is that choosing a TV, it is more difficult than choosing a monitor for sim racing because most of the monitors nowadays are actually really good. 120, 144, 165 and thereabouts all of those choices generally have very high end tier panels that are very suitable for sim racing. The difference will be your aspect ratio if you want 16 by 9, 21 by 9, 32 by 9 or something like that. That might be the biggest thing for you if you want to go just with a big single panel, if you want a wide screen or if you want triple screens. With the TV, the selection is a little more difficult because even though there are a lot of TVs, most TVs aren't really tuned for gaming. They might have some game modes and uh, the responsiveness of them might not be good, and but the picture quality may become a hindrance because these panels will be sitting a lot closer than generally you'll be using your TV for gaming or watching a, a video. So the choices, unfortunately, you need to go to a store and try to figure out which one you should buy because I've, I went to stores and some of the experience that I had with the TVs with, you know, with all the tune modes and checking out generally they weren't very good. And even though they might have a similar panel, everything that is behind the panel in terms of a, a chip CPU doing all of those reconstructions of images turned out not to be the same in practice. In theory, I would see TCLs or high senses with the same panels or of LG, mainly the same panel, but the results are very, very different. The question naturally will be why a huge TV and not a triple screen, a super ultra wide or something like that. The previous monitor that I had on the SIM rig was a BenQ 3405R, so 1440p, 21 by nine, something like that, 34 inch screen very good it had a good wrap around it was incredibly crisp very very responsive but for me something really important is the sense of scale that is somewhat lost in these monitors these monitors are incredibly compact they do their job really well but they have their physical limitations and going towards the tv somewhat removes those physical limitations and puts a sense of scale that is not possible unless you have something as large as that the other reason is a sense of practicality even though the tv is large sideways it isn't really that large and because it is on a different stand i can move the stand back if i need space or something like that and also the situation of having less cables if i went to triple triples or something like that it will be six cables it will be three cables for the monitors and extra three power units uh, for the monitors as well so cables going around i prefer not to have cables i like to keep my stuff simple and even though this is a 4k monitor and i know i'm going to see a lot of comments below saying why you do that i downscaling this to 1440p so in terms of performance i gain some performance instead of losing it because of an ultra wide what i ended up having in the last two months of doing this experimentation it's not something that you see commonly in sim racing is that this was a far better experience than I was expecting because for me, the scale made a huge difference in the way that I was accustomed to the sim rig. It kind of felt that I was more inside of the car, even though it's not VR and I'll go there later. The scale seems appropriate in terms of responsiveness. It loses a little bit, but it's not something that you will notice after a while. But you do need to have something like VRR or G-Sync on these panels. Otherwise, might as well not buy one at all because there will be some situations where if you don't have VRR on, you're going to have a lot of screen breaks and it's not going to be clean. The sense of scale, the immersion, the sense of how physical it feels, especially running at Norchlife, it's, it's something that I wasn't accustomed to. And compared to a small TV, and I actually went back to my ultra wide there, it is something that you notice and you feel like if you go back to the ultra wide, for me, 
it is lacking something and this feels for me so much better. The questions will naturally go around, hey Random, why did you go for a big screen TV and not everything else? Because there are plenty of good choices out there and that is totally true. Let's start first with single monitors. Any single monitor would have a better response rate than this and that includes a choice that I had if I had the budget for it and that would be the Samsung Arc 55. The Arc has a huge advantage compared to this and that will be the curvature. The curvature is very useful in sim racing. It gives you that wraparound feel that is so nice to have. But unfortunately, in terms of budget, it isn't feasible. The other choice will also be ultra wide, which I had before. I had a 21 by 9. I could go even wider than that. I could go a little bit bigger. But then again, it wouldn't give me that sense of scale that I wanted. The other option will be ultra wide, and I've thought about ultra wides a lot ultra wides would probably be the best choice outside of the you know arc 55 but in terms of cost it would be more or less like the arc 55 if you want to have three good monitors it would be already over the price of this small one then you have uh, the cost of your graphics card you'll have to downscale the quality a lot to have some the same sort of performance and then the cable clutter and all of that. For me, I just don't want to deal with that. I just want to keep my sim rig as simple as possible. And if you look at my sim rig, my sim rig only has really the basics. It doesn't have any bass kickers or anything like that. And the last option will be, of course, VR. VR is the best single source of immersion right now. I think sim racing has the best use case of VR or you know any type of simulation like playing elites or playing flight sims. Sim racing is exactly the same thing. It's the best use of VR that you're going to use time and time again, because generally I think that VR is used towards more or catered more towards experiences and people get fed of it. The scale of VR is incredible. The depth perception and all of that. I had an old set, old Oculus CV1 that is stored that I haven't used for a while. There is a reason why I moved out of that, even if I had the opportunity to buy a new VR set. And I always go to monitors instead of, you know, going towards a, a virtual reality set. Some of those same reasons that apply for triple screens apply to VR. There's more cables, there's less performance than a single screen because you are pushing far more pixels. Uh, there's also a sense for me that I've tried, you know, VR for so long. I had the Oculus CV1 for so long as my main way to sim race is that I don't want to deal with VR. I don't want to deal with uh, being sweaty, having tired eyes. You know, after a while, you get just out of your zone. You get a little bit sweaty arms. I've tried uh, last year the PlayStation VR, much better than the CV1, much lighter and all of that. But at the end of the experience, I was always saying, even I was trying on Gran Turismo, it is fun, but it's for me, it's five to 10 minutes fun, maybe an hour, maybe two days. After that, I'm not going to miss it. And honestly, after trying it for so long or for a week or so, when I was doing the review of the headset, I couldn't wait for the time that I would remove the headset and go back to a monitor. That for me is the giveaway that VR is not for me. It may be for you, but it wasn't for me. Anyways, if you are to choose a TV, do make sure that your TV has at the very least G-Sync or VRR compatibility and is at least 120 hertz. If it doesn't have these three things and you want to do, use a TV for sim racing, you're going to buy something else, don't do it because in my opinion, it is really not worth it. Tell me in the comments below how you choose your equipment for sim racing because it might help somebody.